I suppose it's only to be expected in a public place, but there are lots of public around. Each and every time I try to make a video, um, I'm either blocked in the shade or uh, there are people and there are noises and sometimes I go somewhere really quiet and uh, think right now now's the time to make a little video and then the next minute it's swarming with people but here we go I'm going to try and make this one okay so I'm sitting outside the um, outside St Paul's outside the walls again I'm just on my way out now and now, now I can see the sun going Today is the 23rd of September 2018 and it's 29 years ago today, well it was the 24th of September then, Sunday the 24th of September 1989, that I actually moved to London to start work the following day on an HIV ward at St Mary's in Paddington. In, um, in 1989, obviously there wasn't the medications available for people living with HIV that we have now today, and they were indeed very bleak days. So I'd only been out of the priesthood about, um, about four months or so before I returned to nursing, and when I went to St Mary's Paddington, they put me on what was then a middle D grade, like a... Um, a band five now today and they put me on that because I'd been out of nursing for 10 years. My first degree was in theology. I wasn't a qualified teacher at that point. So let me tell you the story about how I got into teachings. So after leaving the priesthood and moving to London, I worked on uh, the ward for seven months back into nursing just for that time when there was a lecture practitioner's post at the Middlesex Hospital, um, a lecture practitioner in HIV studies. And I really fancied it. I fancied getting into teaching, but because my qualifications and my time out of nursing and just those few months in the speciality, I didn't think there was any chance of this happening at all. At, at first, when I worked on the HIV ward, I didn't want people to know that I'd been a priest. Gradually, the news got out and staff and patients found out. And one of the patients, uh, who was moving closer and closer to death, said to me that he didn't have a clue how to plan a funeral so would I help him to plan his funeral so I'd work my shift as a staff nurse and then after work I'd get my uniform off put civvies on and just go and sit with him and help plan his funeral for him and when he got closer to the time for him to die he just said look Dave he said I don't know anybody who can do a funeral for me would you do my funeral so I accepted uh, reluctantly I must say because I thought I was over the sort of priestly stuff and um, just hadn't envisaged doing uh, any sort of funeral after that but I agreed to do it and so lots of my colleagues were um, encouraging me to apply for the lecture practitioners post so I applied didn't think I'd even get an interview but I was granted an interview and it just so happened that the interview was on the day of the, um, uh, the, the this patient's funeral and his cremation and we were running a little bit late so I celebrated his um, uh, funeral rites of passage is celebration of life at the London Lighthouse and then we all went to the uh, West London crematorium where I had to do uh, the final dispatch there and uh, I had to phone the College of Nursing from there and say look I'm running late at the moment I'm just cremating a patient well, they absolutely loved it. I know that's a strange thing to say, but they absolutely loved it. When I was interviewed, there were five others, and they'd all been teaching in nursing for quite a while. And I got the job immediately. And when I asked why I got it, as opposed to uh, some of the others, I was told that they'd been teaching for many years, and that therefore a lot of their teaching was now out of a textbook whereas um, I just cremated a patient and what the College of Nursing was looking for was someone who was able to do uh, um, bereavement and loss issues and spirituality issues so that's how I jumped from a middle D grade to a band 5 to I'm not sure what the new bands are called I just can't ca catch up with those but I jumped from a, um, a D grade to an H grade the equivalent of a nursing officer uh, from a junior staff nurse um, 
And that was it. So I started teaching in April of 1990 and I've been really fortunate to be teaching ever since. But those seven months I spent on the HIV ward at St Mary's Paddington, seeing people die, seeing people suffer, and seeing people going through um, traumas about sexuality, about belief, about religion, it really made me question everything. Because I hadn't long come out of the priesthood and I was full of uh, questions. Uh, doubt, not too sure what was happening. I'd gone through quite a tough time and I decided to step away from the priesthood to do some studies in psychological counselling. But I fully intended to go back to the priesthood. But the longer I was out, especially working with the people uh, living with HIV at St Mary's Paddington, the more I realised that it was going to be harder for me to go back. There were many issues of spirituality affecting people um, on the HIV ward in those days. Some had felt totally excluded by some of the major religions. Some were fearful of death. Some didn't know what the future was going to bring. Some were wondering, well, why me? Why is this happening to me? Um, which are the usual questions that people may ask around illness, but in relation to HIV, this meant um, new ways of having to ask the questions and new ways of having to look at the answers.